Hello, hello, hello from Amsterdam. Hi, it's me from Amsterdam, Koosje. Yes, so I am doing a Facebook Live and I am on location today. Um, I'm in Amsterdam, I am in my neighborhood and uh, I just showed you um, my view and um, the view is a building here that is around the corner or actually a few blocks away from where my studio is and um, I hope by the way you can hear me and you can see me if the audio isn't right or anything just let me know um, and um, this um, uh, this place is uh, I kind of like it um, I actually like it a lot because I love the architecture in this um, in this neighborhood and I will tell you why I am outside doing this Facebook live well that is because I am sort of um, warming up for um, the uh, the new course in sketchbook school sorry I'm a little bit distracted and it's a little bit awkward to be doing this in the middle of the street but hey I'm just doing this so um, we are starting a new course in sketchbook school it's called urban sketching and it's super awesome because we get to learn from urban sketchers like superstar sketchers Nina Johansson um, Liz Steele, Miguel Herans, Lapin, uh, Jason Das. Did I miss anyone? Um, Lapin, Jason Das. I think th those are the ones. Five weeks full of urban sketching. So we will be heading outside. We will draw on location. We will look at how to draw people, how to draw vehicles, how to draw places buildings, find patterns in certain buildings and, and, and subjects, how to add a little bit of a story. Um, so yeah, all that is going to happen in Urban Sketching, the Sketchbook School course. It starts July 31st, so um, if you want to join, you have time to sign up, but be quick because it's filling up and uh, well you just really don't want to miss out on this on this really cool course so uh, I'll show you again um, my um, here we go my view because that's why I'm outside because of this view and I thought for this Facebook live I could be drawing this Let's do a little demo and um, uh, yeah, just warm up alongside of you for the course. So all the people who are uh, teaching in uh, the course in urban sketching, those people are superstars and actually they're on their way or they are already in Chicago, almost all of them, because in Chicago there's a symposium coming up. It's uh, the 26th and um, it's the Urban Sketchers Symposium. So that's a, like an event, I think it's three days, an event of sketch crawls, workshops, sketch book tours, well, uh, you name it, everything that you do when you meet up with a group of sketchers. And especially the meeting with, with other sketchers is of course really cool. And um, well, not everybody can join and um, we sort of do the same in sketchbook school. I mean, we will do sketchbook tours. You will find a lot of people who love sketching. You'll make a whole bunch of friends. And uh, maybe at some point you even uh, will meet live, you know, in real life and um, in person and draw together. But uh, for now, we have five weeks lined up for you. A fantastic course called urban sketching so uh, if you have any questions about that um, just post them in the, um, in the comments and uh, I will see if I can answer them but right now I um, I think I, I just want to draw because that's that's why I'm here I hope you can see um, my page I need to set it up 
because I have a little tripod here and everything. It's a little tricky and again, it's kind of awkward in the middle of the street, but I'm doing this just for you guys. So let's see if I can make this work. That's the sky, hang on. I need to put it in my tripod. And there we go. Okay, I'm not sure if I can see the, any comments coming in. Is anybody, can anybody just put a comment in there so I can see if it pops up, uh, pops up on my screen, uh, just in case. I mean, I'm going to be drawing, but still. Um, I only see that people are watching. I don't see any comments coming in. That's a shame. I don't know why that is. Well, let me just start drawing and then we'll figure out questions later. Um, I hope you can see it. There's uh, quite some bright light because it's very sunny. It's the, w the weather is much better than I anticipated, actually. So this is, I'm, I'm lucky. Okay, so what I want to draw, because I really like the building and the colors and especially the orange color of the of the roofs uh, against the blue sky so um, I think I'll just start with the tower and uh, that will be the main thing in my drawing um, and I will see where I go from there so I'll just start at the top oh and I forgot to say I'm doing um, a one-liner so I just started and I'm not picking up my pen anymore uh, until I'm done. And why I, I do this is because it speeds me up and I can't really stop to think about details. Uh, I just really need to get on with it and I can already see that uh, uh, the proportions of it are totally off, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because we're drawing and we are not making taking photos. Could do could have done that too, but it's not as much fun. So there's a roof in the front and then I can see a roof over here but it's obstructed by the um, by the tree so I will get to that later and as you can see I'm not lifting my pen at all so I need to follow some of the lines again track those lines again to get back to the next point I want to draw. Alright. It's a shame that I can't really switch from my um, drawing um, to my view. It's just impossible with the simple Facebook Live and the iPhone camera, so I hope this is kind of interesting for you. Also, I am not great at drawing and talking at the same time, <laughs> so this could be a very boring video. Sorry about that.
I lifted up my pen. Did you see it happening? Oh, well, that's okay. Okay, I, I think um, with this, I really uh, a sort of have an essence of, uh, of what I see. And I could draw a lot of extra details in there. I don't know if I want to draw a lot of details, but I do really like the the um, the shape of the negative space and there's blue sky with just a few um, clouds uh, so I might um, use that when I add a little bit of color but um, for now I'm going to look a little bit further into what I actually see on those roofs and um, how I can make this more interesting because now it's just one line of part of a very um, uh, elaborate sort of architectural design um, which I don't really want to get into because pff, I just want to make a drawing you know but there's like a lot of roof tiles so now I need to take a decision about what I want to include and what I don't want to include so this tower is is further away than this roof that's behind this roof so I think I won't be adding too much details on this tower, but I do want to add a little something. And then, um, well, I'll just, I'll just dive in and see what happens. I have just turned uh, my pen Oh, in case anyone is wondering, this is a Lamy Safari fountain pen. It has a nib B, and that's broad nib, and you can see it gives a very bold line. I like the flow of, the, um, uh, of this pen, and if you turn it around, you can uh, create uh, thinner lines, which I like. So you can alternate. But these are all bricks, all red bricks, and I'm not sure if I should include any of that because I don't want to draw the bricks. But what I could do, and I'm just experimenting here as we go. I'll just indicate the structure, the texture. And I'm not really worrying about that it should be very accurate or it should be perfect. I just don't want to worry about it because one, I am drawing and two, you all are looking at this. So it's not going to per be perfect anyway. And I'm nervous as is already. So <laughs> I'm just going on with this. I think this adds a lot already. Maybe I can show it a bit closer. Um, it, it adds texture for sure. And I really, really actually like the wonkiness of this line and the wonkiness of this. And actually this in real life, this is much taller than this is, but now it's sort of the same. And I like the playfulness of that. These are all bricks. Here's a little window, and here is a little. There's a room in there. Wouldn't it be cool to to get in that room? It's quite dark. So I cannot see if you are um, commenting. I don't know why I can see that in my screen. I'm looking at my drawing anyway, but um, I can see uh, people popping up in, in and out. So I can see that people are watching. I can see that Jen is wa watching and Kathy is watching, um, but um, I cannot see any comments. So I need to figure that out later. If you guys have any questions or whatever, I'd love to answer them and I'd love to just say hi, you know, after I'm done drawing.
I hope I can figure that out later. Okay, so these are all bricks and these are all roof tiles. And that is kind of tricky because it's a wavy sort of pattern. Um, I'm not going to try to draw that. I'm just going to, again, with thin line, indicate a little bit of that structure, the texture in there. Um, see if that works. And otherwise, I can also add texture um, with uh, watercolors, which I will add later. Now, this is not very successful, I have to say. <laughs> But it doesn't matter, I'm experimenting here. Um, I'm moving on to this roof here. So if you are wondering what urban sketching is, um, well, of course, that is explained in the urban sketching course, but um, everybody has a little bit of a different um, approach towards it. And uh, there's an official urban sketchers uh, group um, that is, or a movement that is very strict about certain rules. But basically, the way I um, translate those rules uh, it's really about drawing on location, uh, going outside. You can do that alone or in a group and um, or with someone else. And um, it's not really about depicting uh, the place perfectly because you can take a picture if you want to do that. But it's really about telling your story through your drawings. Um, So, the, and I think it really is the choices that you make when you're drawing. So you choose your subject or you choose the place where you sit to draw and that makes already part of your story. Um, and it's really, it's, it's not, you don't need to be reporting a place as if you were a reporter, but um, you can just tell a little story about the, the place itself or how you feel or it's really up to you it's kind of like journaling but it's different no maybe it's not different it's like art journaling I'm just babbling just to fill up the space sorry about that but I hope you understand what um, what urban sketching means and um, maybe you can uh, comment and uh, share with uh, the other people who are watching um, if you have any interesting um, uh, experiences when you were drawing outside or on location have you met anyone have you encountered uh, interesting people interesting conversations I, I know I have lots of them so um, tell us about it there's a drop shadow it's quite a dark drop shadow I think I'll include that for a little bit of extra um, depth Okay, what else can we do? Um, there's uh, another tip that I have. If you are um, uh, drawing something like this, and I'm keeping it super simple, um, you can add more depth. I mean, by here's, here's a shadow that will add depth. Um, here's another shadow that will add depth. I can see this, this side of the tower is darker than the front and this side is darker too so I could hatch a little more to add some roundness to it um, 
but also you can put something in the foreground and actually like I said when I was drawing this this part here's a roof but it's a, I can't really see it well because there's trees in the foreground and if you draw those trees you will actually create layers in your drawing so that um, uh, could really help to to add something extra to your to your drawing so again I'll just I think I'll just do uh, a one-liner again looking at the branches and the leaves and it's moving a little bit these branches but that doesn't matter it's just really an indication of the green and I will add color later as well um, which will explain what these scribbles are um, once it's a completed drawing and I think um, one of the tips that I would also have is like don't think too much about um, the outcome oh there's a little bird on the branch so cute don't think too much about the outcome or about um, I never really think about perspective I mean I love wonky lines and um, if I just look at negative spaces like the blue sky and um, I, I look at um, reference points so I can see for example that um, this corner here of this roof aligns almost with this corner here of that roof even though this roof is more forward so those things if you keep those in mind you can sort of capture perspective without thinking of vanishing lines or other um, you know boring stuff you don't want to think about theory you want to draw right at least that's what I want to do so I am making scribbly trees anyone can do this a very cool scribbly tree I think there's some in the background too here I might add like just a little extra layer okay I think that's uh, that's sort of all right and now I also notice that here there's a roof in the background, but here's another roof coming out here. Some tiles at the rim. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm super fiddling around now. Uh, and I mm, really need to think about what I want to do next. I think. I'm going to add some color now and what I also think is that I will be writing some stuff here instead of draw because it's like a, a huge orangey piece with tiles on it I, I don't really feel like drawing that because I don't think it adds a lot um, so I might write some stuff that I know about this building um, to to add a bit of a story it's um, it's just you know then it becomes more than just part of a drawing part of part of or sorry a, a drawing a part of a building it's really it adds a little bit of the history maybe so um, let me see what I know uh, about this I actually took some notes as well because I knew I was going to forget let me take the notes out. There we are. Okay. Can you still see? I sure hope so.
Oops. Uh, I know the architect is called Roost, but I'm looking up um, when it was designed by Ernst Roost. Okay, so I added just a little bit of information about the drawing I just, uh, the building I just drew. Um, so this is a tower of the Bethel Church. Um, it's now, uh, it has now a different name. I think it's called um, Amaran Church. I, I, I don't remember. Anyway, um, it was designed in 1929. And um, the interesting thing is that the building that's in front of it, where we see the roof of is uh, was also designed there's a whole block around this uh, this church that um <laughs> my notes just fell that um was really designed with the purpose of communal use and and in this building here in the front there's now like a child health care uh, consultancy or something so it still has the same purpose as um, it had when it was designed in the 1920s which I really like okay I think um, I am going to add a little bit of color and um, I don't think this is a particular great drawing <laughs> to be honest but um, hopefully a little bit of color will help and uh, otherwise I just had a lot of fun so who cares? All right, so let me... Ooh, the sky has turned really, really blue. So the, um, the uh, clouds have gone. I think I'm just going to be super bold and dive in with uh, a very blue color. Of course, I'm going to regret this as soon as I put... Um, color on paper I know this because I've done this before and I just know it and every time I do it anyway so um, here we go I'll just do it really quickly there's a little bit of wind here so the, the watercolor is um, going to dry very quickly um, plus this paper isn't perfect for watercolor anyway so and again, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not um, going to create like a whole one blob of blue. I'm just leaving white again because when I sat down there was a lot of um, clouds. And the clouds have disappeared kind of. But uh, I like the idea of a 
Dutch cloudy sky in this drawing. Okay, as you can see, I do it really, really quickly. I don't want to um, fiddle too much. Um, sorry, I'm doing this now. This is my sweatband, so I can actually clean my brush. I hope it's all in focus. I can't see because of the sun. Uh, I'm really, really happy I can see that there's 29 people watching. Thank you for attending this, this sort of um, fiddly demo. I'm having fun though. I hope you are too. All right, so um, the, the blue is very nice, contrasting with the orange of um, those red bricks. Yeah, I call it orange. They are called red bricks, but it is really sort of brownish orange. So I want to put those red bricks in and I'm trying to find the right color. There we go. Again, doing this really quickly, I want to add another layer when this, has, this one has dried to uh, indicate the darker sh sh uh, sh shape, the darker side. Sorry. I'll do that here too. It's the same color. This side is a little bit lighter. It's fun because it's uh, around, it's half past five in the afternoon right now, and it's Friday. So it, it, maybe you hear people on the street, they're laughing. It's like weekend, you know, there's a weekend vibe around me. Maybe I should write that down too. That really would add um, a bit of story about me and about how I how it felt to sit here so I might add that a little later okay so here this is a little bit brownish there are also bricks but darker it's a bit of a dull color there we go all right and then there is that little rooster on top which has a really nice light color I think I'm going to um, exaggerate the color a little bit because I like it because I can and I think that is also one of the key things in um, uh, urban sketching that um, you can also draw the things that you want them to to look like you know if you're like mm, you know I like that color but I like it more if it's more yellow you can do that I mean nobody's going to there's not like an urban urban police who will tell you or the architectural ar architectural police who uh, will come up to you and arrest you because you didn't do it accurately I mean let them make a drawing and see how that turns out Okay, so by adding that extra layer, um, you can see it turns out a little bit darker and it turns out as a bit more of a um, shadow. And I think I need to figure out a way to uh, indicate more of a texture. Um, I might is it dry enough? No, I have to wait until this is really dry. Then I'll add another layer. Um, in the meantime, I'll go and look at those trees. Add some green there. Okay, so there's uh, some tree in the background. I'll just fill that in first quickly. And then in the foreground, there's a different tree. I want it a little bit lighter, lighter green, maybe a bit of yellow, just a bit more crisp green, actually. That's what I mean. And I'm not going to color it as if it's a coloring book. I'm just going to sort of 
dab it and hopefully that will add the feeling of these being leaves. I'm really trying to just create a loose drawing rather than a very accurate drawing with perfect watercolors and perfect shapes and that's also just because I feel safer doing that. All right, those are the greens. I might go in there again to add a little bit of dark uh, to indicate there's two layers of uh, greens. Um, I'll do that right away. Maybe add a little bit of brown to indicate a bit of a shaded area. I think that works. And what we could also do to add just a bit of the the idea I told you that the uh, um, that was a bit windy and the leaves were um, moving, and I always like it to splash around a little bit of extra paint. That sort of indicates movement as well to me, and I like what happens when that wet paint falls into that um, the layer of paint that I just put down. So that's just an extra effect, which uh, is really nice. You could do some extra yellow as well, just some lighter bits, could be fun. All right, actually that, that effect could also work for adding structure. I don't know if I want to take that risk um, or that I want to just add some lines there. I think I'm going to add some lines. I can always go back in and uh, do some splashing. What I'm doing now is just actually sort of drawing with my watercolors and it will dry up a little bit lighter. Double here too. Yeah, I kind of like that effect. All right, so um, what I could do is add a bit of color here. Should I do that? Maybe to get in a bit of, um, just add a little bit of balance there. So that's the dull color again. And that also shows us um, a little bit about the architecture and the plan in that block that I told you about. And then actually the rim again has this orangey bit. So I'll just add that here. There we go. Oh, I like how that turned out actually. I shouldn't have colored everything in. This is ro works really nice. Well, there you go. So you actually always find something that you can learn from a drawing that you make and then take it with you the next time. I might do this over here on this rooftop. That indicates those tiles again. And then you can really use the, the, um, your brush stroke for that. That works. Works nicely. I do this, it also sort of indicates, I'm just really experimenting as I go, it sort of indicates the, um, uh, that structure again. Kind of like that. 
I haven't drawn this building before. I've I always come by pass by. It's on my uh, running route actually. So I pass by very very often and always I think I need to sit down to draw this. So finally I did and I had a great excuse. So thank you guys for giving me that excuse. Okay, I think I will finish this off with um, that a little bit of um, text to add um, kind of a, a journaling uh, element. The thing that I just mentioned, that it's Friday and there's this Friday vibe. There's a dead fly here. Oops. So I think this could be a nice spot for that. p.m. There's a nice Friday afternoon vibe here. So of course I could also embellish my draw my uh, writing and I could have written a little bit neater but <laughs> it's a little bit of an awkward position right now so um, I'll leave it as is. Um, so I hope this makes any any sense to you. I'm going to hold it up for you. Hang on. There I am again. Um, oh, I was going to hold it up like this. So you can see what I drew. Well, I hope this makes any sense to you. Um, I think I could have actually also have gone with a little bit of extra green here because over there there's overhanging trees and that's actually would actually have added a little bit more of an interesting frame to go around the drawing uh, that I made. So another learning point here. Okay, so I really hope you like this. Um, I am Mm, it's such a shame that I cannot see any any comments. Let me see if I do this. Does that look weird? I think it does. Can't really change anything right now. Um, no, I can't see any comments. I would love, love, love to answer any questions. Um, but I can't see the comments, which is strange. Um, so, I think I'm going to wrap up. I'm so sorry, I cannot um, answer any questions right now. If you have any questions... Um, oh, yes, let me go through uh, my materials once more, because I'm sure there's questions about that. Um, first of all, I have my bike. It's very, very important material to get where I am. Um, I used for this demo my uh, Lamy Safari pen. It is a very affordable pen, a fountain pen. I fill it with um, ink that is waterproof and it's called Carbon Ink by Platinum. Um, you can buy cartridges, but I buy, Lamy has converters for the pens, so you can just use a converter, soak the ink up and use that, so you don't have to change, uh, change um, uh, uh, cartridges for it every time you can just buy a bottle and then you're good for a year or so or maybe longer I don't know I, I, I it takes me very long one of those bottles um, to color I use a water brush this one is from Pentel and it's uh, I think it's medium sized or large large sized I'm not that particular about it I, I like larger brushes better than smaller ones uh, just because you can splash around the paint, paint more and better. And um, to wipe off my, um, uh, uh, my paint, I use 
an old sweatband. Uh, I have fans here once, but this one was in my bag anyway. Uh, and you don't need a fancy one anyway. Um, it's really handy because you can always wipe off your, off your paint and you don't need to use any uh, cloths or paper that might blow away in the wind like my notes did. <laughs> and then um, uh, finally I have this uh, little tiny uh, watercolor box. Unfortunately it's not available anymore for sale because this is a vintage box um, by Windsor & Newton. I just smeared paint all over. Um, it's from the 1940s I think. It used to belong to my uh, grandfather who was an artist painter and um, I inherited it so I'm very lucky to have that. It's tiny and I can fill the compartments up with, uh, uh, with watercolor paint. I use tubes and most of the paint, I'm, again I'm not very particular on brands or, or anything, but most of the paints are uh, from the Van Gogh brand that's, uh, that, that I have filled it with um, and also a few Copland uh, ones. I might change it up again, I don't know, I have those as soon as one of the tubes runs out I'll just find another one similar kind of color or maybe something different and uh, the sketchbook oh that might be nice to end with um, because this was actually the last um, page of my sketchbook or the almost the last page of my sketchbook so I can do a little flip through of this sketchbook before I leave you uh, and the sketchbook is a um, Sea White of Brighton. It's a British brand. Uh, let me get you back onto the tripod. Oops. And uh, I'll do a flip through. A quick sketchbook tour. Oops, I think we removed the tripod. Okay, so I started this sketchbook. Um, Hang on, need to adjust. Yeah, I started this sketchbook uh, during um, uh, a, um, a workshop that I um, taught. So the first pages are workshop exercises. I'll just go through those, which was really nice to do. And um, then at some point, I I thought, well, I used it, I, I dedicated it to that workshop, but I just used like 10 pages or something. So I started, started it as um, my daily sketchbook. So these are the sketches that I made since. Here's um, a few pages from my recent trip to Paris. A recent trip to England for filming a very new course that's upcoming later this year. Um, oh, here's a, a drawings I did of uh, um, a circuit training that I had uh, that day, and uh, I, I do this almost weekly. Crap, pretty crazy. This is the living room. There's pages in here that I love, and there's pages in here that I hate, and there's pages in here that I forgot. I even did a lot of drawing, uh, writing, I forgot that. And that's even like two weeks ago, I think. This guy, these guys were sitting there and talking, and um, at some point there was a fly stuck on his Velcro, and they were laughing about it very loud. It was funny. This I hate. Oof. This is Draw Tip Tuesday. Some adventures. Draw Tip Tuesday. And um, this is my favorite spot in the neighborhood. I might go and sit there in uh, five minutes after this. This is a drawing of uh, someone who is really not my husband, but he was modeling. It's very interesting strange guy who walked into the living room. Um, 
testing brown ink. One line drawings. Self portrait. Hmm, great recipe. I might turn this into uh, an illustrated recipe. And if you are interested in uh, drawing uh, food and illustrated recipes, check out sketchbookschool.com for Draw It Like It's Hot, because that's a course that I teach all about foodie art. Pages like this. Here I'm testing, um, I'm, I'm experimenting with uh, color, um, colored ink as outlines instead of black ink. I always use black. If you're Dutch, you might understand this. This was in Rotterdam. So this needs to be with a Rotterdam accent. It is gewoon een kontekruiper. And um, this is also in Rotterdam. I tested some inks I mixed and I tried. And I colored ink drawing. And um, there we are. Off to the next sketchbook adventure. So um, before I leave you, I'm so sorry I, again. I I, oh, I miss you guys to you know to see what you were saying. Uh, I'm sorry I can't answer any questions, but if you have any, you can always email me, kosha at sketchbookschool.com, and. Um, also, well, check out the Urban Sketching course because it is really awesome. You will find lessons from Nina Johansson, Miguel Herans, Jason Das, Lapin and Liz Steele. Those are amazing, amazing uh, illustrators and sketchers and they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. They will do demos that are way more awesome than mine because, yeah, you know. <laughs> and. Um, uh, well, we'll get you inspired and um, we'll, we can just share our homework all together. So, um, well, bef before I go, I just uh, hope, I just want to say that I hope to see you in class. I wish you a very nice weekend. I am off to the bar or the terrace now because, wow, the weather is great and it's weekend. All right, have fun. See you in class. <laughs>